La solution à toutes ces critiques qui ont servi à prouver qu'un conciliarisme dans la foi est voué à l'échec, c'est que seule la croix permettra de réconcilier. C'est la profession de foi intègre de la doctrine catholique qui permettra de repérer les traîtres infiltrés potentiels. L'élection du nouvel antipape Bergoglio est une grande nouvelle pour les vrais catholiques et les cédés vacantistes, car ça arrache complètement le masque de la fausse église. Et tout ça sans même avoir recours aux manœuvres subtiles des précédents antipapes. C'est un supporter invétéré des activités interreligieuses, du faux œcuménisme et tout le reste. C'est un révolutionnaire liturgique, un libéral, même pour les standards de la secte Vatican II. N'écoutez pas les médias qui vous font croire qu'il est conservateur, car pour ces païens, celui qui ne se dit pas pleinement en faveur de l'avortement, qui se dit opposé aux femmes prêtres et aux faux mariages gays et tout, se fait taxer d'extrémistes conservateurs. Les faux tradis qui sont obsédés par les messes en latin et qui restent sous l'influence de la secte Vatican II auront du fil à retordre avec cet antipape François, car c'est un ennemi féroce de la messe traditionnelle, probablement le pire. Tous ces faux tradis qui ont constamment cherché à défendre la fausse église et ses antipapes sont ridiculisés. The obstinate defenders of the Vatican II antipopes are similar to the idolatrous king mentioned in Daniel chapter 14. The king worshipped the false god Bel. The false traditionalists and other members of the Novus Ordo sadly become idolaters like the worshippers of the false god Bel by ignoring the fact that antipope Francis is a heretic who denies Catholic dogmas. Francis accepts Judaism, teaches that Protestants and schismatics are in the church, and much more. Those irrefutable facts about anti-Pope Francis's heresies and his open embrace of Christ's denial don't cause the false traditionalists or other members of the Novus Ordo I'm referring to to reject Francis as a heretic as the facts should. On the contrary, they fully accept him despite knowing about these facts, and on any occasion that Francis might say or do anything which happens to be consistent with Catholic teaching, they will proclaim it from the housetops as if it's some tremendous victory. They will announce and promote it with triumphant glee, as if it proves that he has the Catholic faith or opposes evil, as if a documented heretic who accepts false religions somehow becomes a legitimate Catholic because he occasionally says something true or Catholic. It's absurd and it's disgraceful, but it reminds me of the story in Daniel chapter 14 concerning the king and the false god Bel. One can see how much the idolatrous king wanted to believe the lie. He ignored all of the signs that Bell is not the living God, that he is just the work of human hands, and he was desperately searching for any reason to believe in the fraud. In his bad will and deceitful heart, he jumped at any evidence he could find to accept the idol, for while resisting the living God, he nevertheless wanted some God in front of him he could follow and worship, just like the false traditionalists and false conservatives and other members of the Novus Ordo. Ignoring all of the irrefutable facts which prove that anti-Pope Francis is a heretic devoid of the Catholic faith, search land and sea for any reason to consider him a Catholic, for they pine for a live body dressed up in robes they can follow, no matter how many heresies he's on record as having promoted.